Hey everyone and welcome to Deception. Have you ever tried opening a screw? Well, I'm doing so with the help of a screwdriver. And it probably becomes easier with the help of these kind of simple tools, right? So in this video, we are going to know about this kind of simple tools that is machines. So to know more about machines, do watch this video till the end. If you like it, hit the thumbs up and do share to the friends. So let's start. Well, coming to machines, what are machines actually? Well, machines are simple tools that help us to do our work in a much easy manner. How? It does so by either multiplying our effort, multiplying effort like in this case, or it can help us to uh, overcome the load by applying our effort in a convenient direction. Uh, if you take an example, you can take an example of fetching water from a well with the help of a pulley, you see. If you, are, if you are fetching the water directly from the well, you'll be applying the effort in an upward direction that is against the gravity. So you have to apply more effort. But if you do so with the help of a pulley, we'll be applying the effort in downward direction that is along the gravity. So in this case, machine help us to apply our effort in a convenient direction, right? Well, moving to the third point, the third point is applying our effort at a convenient point, you see. At a convenient point means what? Well, in most of the cases, in many cases, we see that though we are applying our effort, but the outcome is not so much, right? What, why, why does so happen? Because we are not applying our effort at a convenient point. If we, if we are traveling somewhere on a bicycle, you see, so we'll be applying our effort at, on the pedals, not on the wheels directly, right? So machines help us to apply our effort at a convenient point. And thirdly, if machine is not able to help us in these three ways, it also can help us to have a speed gain. Right. How do we have a speed gain? Well, you see, if we use a pair of scissors to cut the cloth or something. So we see we have a pair of scissors over here. So we'll be studying later on that this is the fulcrum point. This is the point where we are going to apply the effort. And over here we have will be having the load actually. Well, we'll come to it uh, later on. So these are the four benefits of a machine actually. Well, moving on, we will have some technical terms, right? So the first technical term that we're going to study is load. What are load? Load, we can say any force that the machine has to overcome is called the load, right? That is, uh, in case of a pulley, we see the bucket, the bucket of water that the pulley has to uh, pull is the load, right? Moving on, the second term is the effort. Effort, what is effort actually? Effort is the force that we are going to apply to overcome that load. That is our effort, right? And the third point or the third technical term is mechanical advantage. What is mechanical advantage actually? Well, mechanical advantage is the ratio of load to effort, right? Moving on, we have another technical term and that is velocity ratio. What are velocity ratio? Velocity ratio is the ratio of velocity of effort to the velocity of load. And we know velocity equals displacement by time, right? So over here we will have displacement of effort, over here we will have displacement of load. If you cancel out T, then we will get displacement of effort by displacement of load. And this actually marks the gain in speed, right? We will come to it later on. And finally we have the efficiency. What is efficiency actually? Efficiency is the ratio of work output to the work input. And based upon efficiency, machines are classified into two categories. They are ideal machine and one is the actual machine, right? What is an ideal machine, you see? When efficiency, if you multiply this by 100, then we get efficiency in terms of percentage, right? So a machine that has 100% efficiency is said to be an ideal machine. Well, this kind of ideal machine is hypothetical. It's not possible in our real life. Uh, but what are actual machine? Any machine that has efficiency less than 100 is, uh, is an actual machine. And in actual machine, we do not have efficiency equal to 100%. Why? We will know certainly. So in actual machines, the efficiency is not 100% and it is because of probably some factors. What are they? 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मुविंग पार्ट्स ऑफ मशीन द मुविंग पार्ट्स ऑफ मशीन राइट दे आर नॉट फ्रिक्शनलेस दे आर नॉट frictionless right so a large amount of energy is used to overcome the friction right everything that moves stops why because of the friction it between it's a uh, between between the surface and the ground right so a large part of energy is is used to overcome this friction and thus the efficiency decreases moreover the rigid, the parts of machine are not rigid right and the string in it is not elastic right string is not elastic and further the machine has got to overcome its own weight also right so machine has to overcome its self weight so due to these factors uh, any machine is not 100% efficient and thus an ideal machine is a hypothetical machine so we are now familiar with some technical terms let us derive the relationship between them we recently have learned that mechanical advantage equals load to effort right velocity ratio equals displacement of effort to displacement of load and efficiency equals work output by work input so what is actually work output work output is the work done by the machine on the load right so it will be load into displacement of load right and what is work input the force the effort that we apply on the machine to overcome the load is the work input that is effort into displacement of effort what is this ratio load is to effort it is mechanical advantage and over here we have displacement of effort by if we substitute it in the denominator so displacement of effort is to displacement of load is in the denominator portion right so it is 1 by velocity ratio so our efficiency equals mechanical advantage is to velocity ratio or mechanical advantage equals efficiency into velocity ratio this is the relationship between these three important technical terms now we'll move on to levers so what are levers actually now levers are a simple kind of machines and how do they look like and what are their classification will be studying right now so levers uh if you have to, if i have to explain lever then i can do so with the help of this marker you see if i fix this marker at a point at this point so it is capable about rotating this point or if i fix this marker at this point so it is capable of turning about this point right so a lever is something uh, a rigid or a straight or it may be bent bar which is fixed at a point right it may be this point or it may be here or it may be here any point may be fixed and uh, it is capable of rotating about this point right this fixed point is known as fulcrum the point where load is applied say we have a load over here so this is load and then to overcome this load we apply the effort so let us say we are applying our effort over here so this is what a lever looks like it has three points three important points a fixed point known as fulcrum a point where load is applied and a point where effort is applied now this distance of load from fulcrum is known as load arm right and this distance of effort from the fulcrum is known as effort arm we earlier have learned that mechanical advantage is the ratio of load and effort over here it equals effort arm is to load arm this is yet another definition of mechanical advantage thus mechanical advantage will vary according to the length of effort arm and load arm in the case of levers and based upon the position of this fulcrum load and effort the levers are classified into three categories well the first one is glass one in which the fulcrum lies in between load and effort right however mechanical advantage may be equal to one as in this case we can see effort arm equals load arm so mechanical advantage will equal one but if i shift the fulcrum to this side so what will happen load arm will become less than effort arm we have mechanical advantage equals 
effort arm by load arm that is our effort arm will be greater thus our mechanical advantage will be greater than 1 but if we if we have another class if we have another partition that is if you shift the fulcrum a bit towards the effort arm say somewhere here so what happens our effort arm get reduced right so in this case what will happen the load arm will be greater than the effort arm so the ratio will become less than one that is mechanical advantage will be less than one so for the first class of lever we can have any of the three cases that is mechanical advantage equal to one mechanical advantage greater than one or mechanical advantage less than one right well the if we look at the example there are numerous examples in our daily life in the park we can see seesaw right so in seesaw we have a fixed point in the middle and and the both ends we have load or effort so seesaw will be a good example of class one then we have scissors where the fulcrum lies in between we apply effort at one point and load is on the other side so scissors also come under class one we'll move on to the second class of levers right in second class what happens the fulcrum is on the either end right load is on the is in between and the effort is on the either end other end right so the load is in between the fulcrum and effort so in this case what happens the effort arm you see the effort arm is much larger than the load arm so in this case what will happen mechanical advantage will always be greater than one right however we may shift the load always the effort arm will be greater than load arm so in this case only one case is possible that is mechanical advantage will always be greater than one and that implies that it this kind of lever will act as a force multiplier right because by applying less effort we are going to overcome a large amount of load so class 2 levers acts as a force multiplier any kind of bottle openers nutcracker we see by applying less effort we are able to overcome a large amount of load so these bottle openers nutcrackers fall under class 2 right where mechanical advantage is greater than one moving on to third class levers in third class levers we'll see the arrangement of fulcrum load and effort first and then we'll discuss some examples right so a third class lever has effort in between the load and the fulcrum point right so in this case what happens you see the load arm is much greater than the effort arm so in this case mechanical advantage is less than one also the velocity ratio is less than one well what does this imply is actually velocity ratio is less than one we have seen that mechanical advantage is less than one thus this kind of machine this kind of levers are not going to act as a force multiplier so the question arises though the mechanical advantage is less than one why are we going to use this kind of levers so the answer to this will be well the velocity ratio is displacement of effort by displacement of load if this is less than one it implies the displacement of effort will be less than displacement of load well, what does this implies i'm going to show you with the help of an example a simple example will be a knife a knife consists of a small handle and a long blade so we apply our effort on the handles so this is displacement of effort and over here we have some object that we have to cut so this is displacement of load so we see that there is a small with a small displacement of effort we have a large displacement of load that is our work is done in a much faster way and thus these class third class of lever though they have mechanical advantage less than one because they help us to do our work in a much faster way or to obtain a gain in speed we use this class of levers well uh, we have completed the all the three classes I will give you some body have some human body examples that acts as first class second class and third class right so first of all we have first class that is a human skull I'm sorry for the image so we our head is fixed at this point we see at the neck so this can be said to be fulcrum 
while nodding our head we apply effort at the back of the head near cerebrum or cerebellum so this is where we apply effort and this is where the load or the weight of the skull is suspended so we can see that fulcrum lies in between load and effort so this belongs to first class lever in the second for the second class we have a human toe raising raising our body weight on heels raising our body weight on heel where toe is kept fixed on the ground and we apply our effort on the heels to raise our body weight on this so this is where the load is suspended our whole body weight is suspended and fulcrum that is our toes lie on the ground attached to ground and we try to lift our body weight with the help of heels by applying the effort on heels so in this case load lies in between fulcrum and effort so this belongs to second class lever right and for the third class we have our forearms say our palm and it has some load on it some block right so load is over here right this is the end right the joint so this is the fixed point that is the fulcrum we apply force on our forearms so this is the effort so we see in this case the effort lies in between load and fulcrum so lifting a block or something on our forearms with the help of our forearms on our palm we have the third class of lever right so this was all about levers and this uh, and by this we complete the first video on machines more videos will be coming till then stay tuned